Hi guys, and thank you so much for joining me today. So today we're going to be talking about how I set up the Fuji X-T3 for run and gun filmmaking. Now when I say run and gun, I'm talking about the stuff I'm doing for YouTube and also my wedding filmmaking as well. So for my weddings I'm shooting stills and also video at the same time. So I need to be able to get to everything really quickly and get everything dialed in as quickly as possible. So before we jump into the settings guys, I'd just like to tell you about my LUT pack that I've got and it's nearly finished. I'm hoping to release it uh, mid to late November and it's gonna be completely free for one week for all my loyal subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already guys, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell and you'll be notified when that is released. Yeah, it's gonna be three different cinematic looks you'll be able to apply to your Eterna footage and just uh, yeah, apply them on top of your footage and it'll yeah, just give you that cool cinematic vibe. Okay guys, so let's jump into the settings and I'll talk you through how I'll set the camera up. So first of all, I'll talk you through the function buttons that I've customized. So the first one is the one on the front and I've just customized this to bring up the level. So um, click that and it'll bring the level up. And this makes it really easy for quickly leveling your tripod up or if you just hand hold in, just gives you a little bit more accuracy as well. And then press it again and obviously it will take the level off the back of the screen so it's not obstructing your view of the rear LCD screen. So, so the top function button I've customized to turn on and off the zebras. So just press it in, the zebras will come up and that will tell you if you're losing any detail in your highlights. Um, I've set my zebras to 100%, which is the least sensitive. Um, I've just found that works for me. But you know, you play around with that yourself, and you'll be able to find you know what works best for you. And it's really handy because you can see if you're losing any highlights, and then press it again, and it gets rid of the zebras, so it's not distracting on the back of the screen. So that's really handy. You can just turn it on and off as you're adjusting your exposure. So that really, really helps. So first off, I'll just talk about the settings on, on the dials, basically. So obviously we're using the aperture ring to control the, the aperture and the depth of field. That's pretty much standard. I don't tend to use auto ISO. I tend to adjust it manually as need be. And also the shutter speed, obviously that's gonna depend on what frame rates we're shooting at. So we always wanna be double the frame rate. So at the minute I'm shooting 24 frames a second. So I need my shutter speed to be 48th of a second. So obviously we don't have that on the dial on the top there. We've only got 60th of a second. So we wanna change it to 60th and then use the rear command dial then to turn around to 48th of a second. So we'll just rotate that dial until we see 48th of a second. And that will give us the correct shutter speed for our frame rate of 24 frames per second. So on the back of the screen, you can see I've got my histogram on the back there, which again is gonna be helping with my exposure all the time, see if I'm losing any detail in the shadows and the highlights, gonna try and keep a nice balanced histogram. Um, I like to keep it in boost mode. I want the best performance out of the camera possible. So always in boost mode. Yeah, so that's pretty much what we've got set up on the dials. So let's talk about the first option in the menu and that's movie mode. Now this has got all our different resolutions and frame rates in. So I, I tend to shoot with lots of different uh, resolutions and this might not see, suit some people, but it does actually suit me quite well. So if I'm doing talking head stuff like this, I might shoot in 4K, that'll give me the option of cropping in really close on my face if need be. Um, if I've got it on the tripod and I'm shooting a, a wedding and they're doing their vowels, I'll shoot that in 4K as well and then allow me to get in close as well if I need to and so you know a bit of I can add a bit of motion to it especially if it's on the tripod and it's static I can track that motion a little bit in post in premiere so so if we're outputting at 1920 by 1080 if we shoot the 17 by 9 we'll get a little bit more wiggle room and we can adjust and crop in post as need be without losing any resolution so I've been using that quite a bit the 17 by 9 for just general stuff and especially if we're adding black bars to our footage afterwards as well, we can do a whole lot of uh, recomposing in post and add some animation tracking, that type of thing, some motion, some zooming, some panning, all of those different things we can do just a little bit with that without losing any resolution if we're just um, exporting at 16 by 9. So that's, that's worth a go. I've, I've used that quite a bit. Now, for the most part, I'm shooting at 24 frames per second and I'm using the highest quality at 200 megabits per second. So this suits me, but it might not suit everybody else. So, um, you know, this is something that really is down to personal preference. And so let's go down to the codex. Now, we've obviously got two different codex here to choose from. We've got the H.265 and the H.264. Now, currently I'm using the H.264 and it's perfect for YouTube and 
my wedding filmmaking where I'm not doing a really big color grade. Um, I haven't found the need to go to the 10 bit yet. Um, this might change in the future. Um, so if you plan to do a lot of color grading, then you probably would want to be shooting at the 10 bit. But I have to say, the uh, H.264 8 bit codec is working really nicely at 200 megabits per second. I'm really pleased with that. And uh, obviously, it's uh, easier uh, once you get to post shooting at 8 bit as well. It's a lot quicker than 10 bit. So, um, post production, it's uh, yeah, it speeds things up quite a bit. So, Obviously, the compression is long up because that's the, home, the only compression we've got at H.264. So let's come down the menu. Full HD high-speed recording. Now, obviously, this will give us our slow motion. So, so the first option is the 120p, 59.94 frames per second. Um, I use this quite a lot if I'm speed ramping. So on the timeline, it just gives me a bit more flexibility. It's easier to ramp than if you just had it slowed down five times to 24p. But that being said, if I don't plan to do any speed ramping and I'm just taking a quick shot, maybe of say some flowing water or something, then I'll do the five times because if I know I'm not going to do anything in post, then it's already done for me. I don't have to do anything. So it speeds the workflow up, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, that's pretty much that. But there's a whole different bunch of options there you can choose from. And the good thing about it is it will select your shutter speed for you as well. So you don't have to alter that, which is great. So you can turn it, once you turn it back off again, you'll go back to your original settings. If it's 24 frames a second, your shutter speed will be 48th of a second. So nothing will have changed there. So moving on down to the film simulation modes, I've been shooting in a Turner and I absolutely love it. I really do. It's been great. You know, obviously it didn't have it on the X-T2. Shot in F-Log quite a lot on the X-T2 and then graded it in post. But I'm really liking the Eterna. It give, gives me a really nice base to work from. And it it's, works quite, quite well for grading too. Quite pleased with it. Next one down, we're going down to white balance. Now, obviously this is personal preference. Depends what you're shooting. Like shooting me now, I've got a custom white balance dialed in. I don't want auto white balance because I don't want it changing all the time. Um, so, you know, but you know, if you run and gun in, auto works really well, um, you know, don't generally have any problems with it. But again, you know, that's per personal preference. You just select the one you feel best suits the situation. Um, now, dynamic range um, all depends on obviously the conditions you're shooting in. I don't tend to go to 400. It's either 100 or 200. Generally, it stays in 100 though. So highlight tones, I just bring that to minus two. Shadow tones, minus two. Color, minus one and sharpness minus two. Now that gives me a really nice flat image to work with in post. I don't like to over sharpen my images out of the camera. I prefer to do any sharpening in post, but that's again, just my personal preference. So we can then take this into Premiere and just add in our color grade afterwards. So noise reduction, I don't use. Intraframe noise reduction, I don't use. F-log recording, yes, if, we, if we've got really, really high contrast scene outside, it's bright and we're struggling. You know, especially maybe shooting a wedding when you've got maybe the bride and groom, white dress, dark suit, and you know, it's mega bright, then F-Log recording will come into its own there, will give us heaps more dynamic range. Peripheral light uh, correction I'll leave on. Um, movie um, AF mode, we've got obviously two different options here. Uh, generally, if I'm behind the camera, I will use the area mode. So. Um, you know, I'll be able to change that area to where I want to focus in on. Um, but if I'm like we are now, the other side of the camera, I'll use multi-area mode. And it doesn't really matter then where I am, um, it will pick up my face, okay? So we'll go down to tracking sensitivity, and by default, it's set to plus two. I've set it down to plus one. I found that works for me. But again, you know, trial and error. Face detection works fantastic on the X-T3. I've used it a lot and I've been very, very impressed with it. So obviously, if I'm in front of the camera, not behind it, I'll use the face detection and for the most part, it's doing a cracking job. So next one down is manual focus assist. Now I've got my set to peaking and it's set to highlight red low. And that works really well for me. If you're manually focusing, really, really helps. So focus check, I've got turned off um, because I found it a bit of a pain, to be honest. Um, rotate whenever you rotate the manual focus ring it zooms in I prefer to actually do this myself by pressing the rear command dial in which will bring up that focus check for me so you just press the rear command dial in and it will zoom in rather than having it on permanently so yeah that, that's what I've done there 
So obviously we've got the zebra settings here, which we talked about at the beginning. I've got that assigned to the function button. And I've got the zebra level at 100%. I've found that suits me. Um, you know, again, play around with it, see how, see how you get on. So audio settings, so the first two for me aren't really that relevant. I'm always using lav mics pretty much for everything these days anyway, so I don't really need those, but that's, again, just my personal preference. The limiter I've got turned on, wind filter and low cut filter are off, headphones volume five. I use the tally light quite a bit, um, especially if I'm recording myself. I've got it set to front on and rear on, so I can see the light in the front of the camera, make sure nothing's happening and that it's recording. If I'm shooting somebody else, I'll have the rear on but the front off. So, so guys, these have been my run and gun filmmaking settings for the Fuji X-T3. So, like I said before, these settings are not going to suit everybody. Everybody's shooting different stuff. But if this has been some help to you in any way, then that's great. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope you really got something from it. If you're interested in getting the LUTs, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Cheers.